Paul Watson, a significant Canadian citizen who has undoubtedly changed this world. Murder, defined in the Oxford Dictionary as the unlawful, premeditated killing of one human being by another. The crime of unlawfully killing a person in Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. But not once is the presence of animals mentioned in these definitions. Why not? They feel, they perceive, they've been discovered to show emotions and intelligence at even the most basic levels. Humans have learned many things from the creatures of Earth, from fan and turbine blades based on humpback whale fins, to dynamic swimsuits based on the design of shark skin, to architecture based on fish skeletons. And still, we manage to call them the lower species of Earth, using them and going as far as wiping entire populations from the world's surface. From the annual seal hunt in Canada, to the deaths of thousands of dolphins in Taiji, Japan, from whaling expeditions, to shark finning. Humans exploit and destroy the lives of so many different wild animals in cruel and inhumane ways. Luckily, there are a select few individuals who break away from the what I can't see won't harm me mindset of the world and make steps to change the world for the better. David Suzuki, Farley Mowat, Jane Goodall, all names that are globally recognized. There are those, though, less well-known in the modern world. Paul Watson was born on December 2, 1950, in Toronto, Canada, and displayed his individuality from a very young age. In 1960, when he was 10, the Kindness Club became a crucial part of Paul's life. After experiencing the death of a beaver he had befriended to fur trappers, Watson was dedicated to put an end to the cruel deaths that animals were submitted to by human activity, from destroying leg traps to disturbing hunters and telling other boys off for shooting at small birds. He did everything in his power to try and make his wish become a reality. Watson's love for the ocean developed after 1968, when he joined the Canadian Coast Guard in Vancouver, British Columbia. From then on, the sea became his second home, providing voyage voyages with British, Canadian, Swedish, and Norwegian merchant marines, and continuing his services with the Coast Guard for another two years. In October of 1969, Paul Watson assisted in founding the globally recognized environmentalist society, Greenpeace. Along with a group of protesters, he traveled to the border between Canada and the U.S. to rally against nuclear testing in the ocean, near Anchitka. In 1977, a second Greenpeace protest against Canadian sealing was held. It was here, in the frozen north, that Watson displayed the true extent of, that, of his activism. Handcuffing himself to a tow line reeling in pelts, Watson found himself being dragged along ice and dunked repeatedly into the frigid Arctic waters. After being pulled up onto deck and beaten with bits of blubber, Watson was rescued by the RCMP. Eventually, these types of actions removed Watson from Greenpeace, and he struck out on his own, but not before the exploitation and cruel treatment of a variety of species. Paul Watson's activist actions did not stop at his leaving of Greenpeace. He rather started another, more aggressive approach at combating crimes against sea creatures. This society eventually became known as the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. With two remaining loyal crew members left, Paul once again set out for the Arctic, this time with far more radical actions in mind. Over the years, the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society gained a very famous reputation for its methods of bringing justice to the abuse of cetaceans. Rather than attempt to be diplomatic, they decided to take far more drastic, life-risking measures, from throwing flashbang grenades and riding small boats dangerously close to larger whaling vessels, to flooding engines, 
and using their own ships as battering rams. Unfortunately, these actions are not taken lightly, and prosecution has often accompanied the name Sea Shepherd. Governments create webs and pitfalls in attempts to catch Sea Shepherd crew members and charge them for crimes against income. Although I do not fully agree with the tactics of the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, their motives are completely understandable. I've always been passionate about the well-being of the sea creatures of this earth, and the actions of the Sea Shepherd and their recently arrested leader, Paul Watson, have inspired me to further investigate what's going on on Earth's surface. There are many different websites that a person is able to find. Donation websites sponsored by filmmakers. Protest websites against, against certain abuse issues. Taiji Japan is a, as an especially large cause. And there are many things that one can do to learn further about these issues. Other websites provide information as to the progress of Paul Watson's arrest and the Sea Shepherd's attempts at reviving sea life on Earth.